Hey, what's up? Silas here. This is going to be uh, kind of a two-part thing. Well, first I'm going to be asking you guys about this one illustration that's on the screen right now. That's going to be the main topic of this actual video. This is an illustration I did some time back. It's Pepe, kind of based with uh, House MD, which was a television show, I think, on Fox. It was Hugh Laurie as this ornery doctor, and he would do these different diagnoses on different things. And this Pepe thing was something that came up, Pepe, <laughs> came up during the American election and was used by people, I think, on the right wing, mostly as a meme to kind of troll people on the left. And people started saying that it was a Nazi symbol and everything. So I created this and I shared it some time back, back in 2016 in a closed group, in a closed philosophy group that I'm part of on some social media platform with this comment. Created another image. Shall be posting it whenever anyone claims questions of Hillary's health are a right-wing conspiracy. And the following is one of the interactions I had with somebody who commented on this image. So they said, I don't understand what this is supposed to do. Aren't you just confirming their misunderstanding that 1. You're a Nazi. 2. Whites are Nazis. 3. Pepe is a white supremacist symbol. And 4. Therefore, the alt-right and Trump supporters are unashamed white Nazis, and non-white alt-righters are self-hating? So now this is my response to him. It's not supposed to do any one thing in particular. It is a meme, most usually used for the lulz. It is also not really an argument, but can convey certain ideas. Then now I go and break down his, address his points that he made. So his first point was, you are a Nazi. My answer to that was, I am not a Nazi. The swastika itself isn't even a Nazi symbol, but was used by the Nazis and does have those negative connotations. His second point was whites are Nazis. My answer to that was, I am not white, nor is everyone that asks about Clinton's health. Neither is the entire alt-right, neither is Pepe, he is a cartoon frog. Three, Pepe is a white supremacist symbol. My answer to that was, refer to point one, or answer one. Pepe existed before the alt-right or any Trump association, and this mocks them for saying that Pepe is an alt-right or Nazi or a Trump kind of tool. His fourth point was, therefore, the alt-right and Trump supporters are unashamed white Nazis and non-white alt-righters are self-hating. My answer to that was, it's flawed reasoning on their part. They likely think these things regardless of the evidence, as I would assume that you do not think that about Trump supporters because you have seen the evidence that many of them likely have. And a little clarification of that point, I was trying to say that, look, most of us have the same access to information. If we are on a social media platform, we can find other information. That whole idea that you're living in a bubble where all you see is these evil Nazis out there, I doubt that is a thing that they're actually using. Most of these people have the idea of saying, of calling people Nazis, not based on actual proof, but off of feelings and other biases that they may have. So back to my response. So in addition to this, the House MD play is one on them being many different diagnoses to what ails Hillary Clinton, the country, or people that make the kind of judgments and assumptions that you listed in your often spurious manner. That's just going back into the thing where I'm saying, like, look, with this thing, many people still to this day, I don't think people have really answered what exactly was happening with Hillary Clinton. Maybe she said it in her book. She had that what happened thing. I don't know if she answered what happened with all the illness. I know there was talk of pneumonia and then... She hugged a kid, and people are like, okay, if you hugged a kid, why would you hug a kid if you had pneumonia? You could pass it on to them. There's also these situations of Dona Brazil, who was uh, an interim head of the Democratic National Convention. She came out and started talking about how there was a lot of connections between the Clinton campaign and the DNC. So maybe she didn't feel like um, campaigning as much, not because she was ill, but because she thought she had it in the bag, and she did get the nomination. So even if she didn't campaign that much, she still got the nomination and then went to go to the presidency. I don't know what was happening with that. But yeah, so that's the thing with House MD. You don't really know what's going on, so we need someone to diagnose it. And <laughs> back to the response. So it also plays as well on the fact that when people say Clinton is sick from what they see, you often get the appeal to authority question of, are you a doctor? Or the alternative of people diagnosing Trump and supporters as hateful or psychopathic by saying that they are therapists, psychologists, or otherwise experienced in their, in this kind of diagnosis. And I actually have an actual example of that happening to me. I was in this store in New York, this little deli, and um, when the cashier is there, it was kind of a local deli that I went to a couple of times. 
I had some conversations with one of the cashiers there who actually was Trump was supporting Trump and he was an immigrant from somewhere in India. And he part of our discussion was how there's corruption in every country. It just shows up in a different way in the United States of America. So if you have an outsider truly coming in and doing that, maybe it's a positive thing. So anyway, during this election time, people are talking about things in different times. We're sitting there, this Indian cashier, me who happens to be black, and then this, I think it was a J- Jewish lady or something, she comes in and she starts asking us about the election. And then we said we actually kind of support Trump. We're kind of pro-Trump. And then she started talking about, she's like, I am a therapist. I'm telling you, she is. He is completely psychopathic. You guys need to be careful about supporting him. And a few other just buzz things that he was throwing up. But that whole I am a therapist thing is a regular thing. So back to the response. So it's mainly for the laws, though, but has the above and other meanings that led me to create it. Um, I created this after a friend had posted an article about Clinton needing support to climb one step, and another jokingly commented that the health questions are conspiracy by right-wing frogs, and that's what made me create this and then end up posting it. So it's not supposed to do any one thing in particular. His response to that, this person I was having the conversation with, was, um, they're just going to see it as you confirming their worldview. If they understood any of those points, they wouldn't have to be made. You might laugh out loud. They will use it as proof of their own bias. And they wouldn't even need to do any spinning. It already fits into the narrative that they and their friends believe. So my response to that was, no need to assume that about them. They also are not the only ones seeing it. If it helps one person possibly change their mind or think about something in a different way, it's worth it. And if not, it's still my time and such. And as I said, didn't for the laws. So you can feel free to give up on them completely and engage with them as you see fit. As for not spinning it, they all do it. I do it at times too. And though I try to reduce it as much as possible and also provide source material for people to make their own conclusions, all you inferred can also be spun as it is simply just an image of a cartoon frog. So that's it on the response, and I've had a lot of positive conversations online. I don't know about you. I mean, a lot of people say nothing can be accomplished online, but I think the internet is just a tool. It also depends on who you talk to. If you just go to a certain place, like let's say you just go out to a bar, IRL, in real life, and all you do is go to a bar with some people, and you drink, and you just talk about the same things, the same sports things, you might not be able to have a certain quality of conversation. Yet if you go to that same bar, but maybe you have a few less drinks, you get to a place that's a little quieter, and then you pick the topic that you guys talk about, you can have a very engaging and um, you can have a whole different experience. It's not the location itself. It's what you guys decide to engage in and what you decide to converse in. So with that being said, <laughs> so with that being said, another thing from Carvey Enthusiasm. Having said that, well, <laughs> getting back to this. So with that being said... I do understand that this could be offensive to people. Let me know. Do you guys think this Pepe thing is offensive? What do you think about it? There is also that very interesting, um, I think, a study that was done that says that a lot of people, once they find something that goes against the narrative that they hold in their mind, they actually double down and get deeper into it. You know, if they're ostrich, they dig their head deeper into the sand. I have had an experience that's kind of opposite to that. And this is maybe a belief or hope that if people have enough of the information that I've had access to or just information, the actual facts, the actual material that's out there, people can change their mind. Sometimes it has to be done in a certain way. It has to be given to them in a certain language, packaged in a certain way for them to understand it. But I think once they absorb it, people want to know the truth. People want to change and there is that ability. Do you guys believe this? So now, ending this video, the illustration that was going on on the screen, the speed drawing that I was doing here, is of Sir Roger Scruton, or Scruton, Scruton, I think, pretty sure it's Scruton. I listened to him as he was on the Tom Woods show talking about what a conservative is, and he had this marvelous quote. I mean, the whole, the whole of the video, the whole thing him talking was amazing. You should definitely listen to it. I think I've linked it in a previous video, but here's a quote. I've never in my life been hopeful. I take the view that pessimism is a wise position to adopt, because you are always agreeably surprised. Okay, the guy had this amazing British or British accent, so he says it in a much better way. And after the entire talk, I was like, hmm, that actually is pretty cool to think of. But yeah, I'm still hopeful that enough information can get out there and people can change their minds. 
So that illustration is going to be on this series of shirts that I'm doing with people's images and the quotes. I need to double check to see if it's legal to use people's quotes and images in this way. But the Pepe is also going to be in the store. Link's going to be there below to get to that store where you can buy different kinds of merchandise, like phone things and t-shirts and sweatshirts, posters and stuff like that. So go ahead. Let me know what you think about that quote. Let me know what you think about talking to people and sharing information with people. Definitely let me know if you think the Pepe thing is offensive. And let me know if you actually buy any of this stuff. Well, anyway, till next video, like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye.